Oh, Same that's one. right. That's right. Okay. There you go. We still, All is right. your, your volume? David, we're live. We are live. This is exciting. I, and Terry, this is the place I've been. I, I've been everywhere on the South, but not so much. I know you're going to Montana next month, but uh, we are live and we are talking Texas. And uh, someone that lived in Houston for about 10 years, uh, I know a little bit about Texas. How about you, Terry? What's your Texas background? Oh, my gosh, David. I've been to Texas. Well, I lived in Texas so, in 1985, <laughs> so that was that was easy. Uh, and then I've, I've been there. I've literally been to Texas 100 times in my life. I've been all over that state. Love it. Love it. Great state. Uh, it's a kind of hot in the summertime, I don't mind saying. But it's a great state with great people. Absolutely. And we 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 have Jessica. Jessica, what's your last name again? I'm, I'm so sorry. It's all right. It's simple. It's Johnson. That's easy. Yep. Jessica Johnson and Callie Re Red. 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 Mm -hmm. Well, hey, guys, thank you so much for joining our show today. And today we're talking everything about Texas. And we're going to focus on the Hill Country and a little bit about the San Antonio area. So uh, if you guys don't mind, if you would both share who you are, what your markets are, and talk a little bit about Texas, we'd love to get started. Perfect. Is your volume on, Callie? I still can't hear you. No, we can't hear Callie. Not sure well, she turns why. her volume on. I'll go ahead okay. and start. So my name is Jessica Johnson, and I'm with my fabulous business partner, Miss Callie Red, and uh, we own Solid Realty Group. We have been around uh, for about eight and a half years now um, in the San Antonio and the Texas Hill Country. So um, we, well, she grew up there. I grew up in Houston, and then I kind of came over to Bernie when I was in high school, and so I've been there ever since. So I've got about twenty. 20 years in the Bernie and the San Antonio area. Now, did hey, you- Hey, real, real quick, Jessica. So most people, although most people know where San Antonio is, but can you kind of explain where the hill country is? Most people don't know there's hills in, in Texas. So if you can explain <laughs> well, where that is, that'd be great. Well, let me just say, after coming back from California a couple weeks ago, we definitely do not have the same hills that um, California and other places have, but we do have a, an incredibly beautiful area um, here in Texas that is kind of north San Antonio, heading um, up towards maybe Austin area, uh, going up in, in that direction. And it, we have just incredible hills and um, a lot of beautiful trees, a lot of really pretty area. So people tend to move down here um, for a couple of reasons. One, they want more of a smaller rural area in which, you know, they have a little more, you know, choices on what their kids attend for school, what they do, a um, little more in their background of, of how they can control their environment and what their choices are. And so over the last couple of years, I mean, we've seen an incredible influx of people from from all over the United States, but a lot of people coming from California. And I, I really think that a majority of, of what that is, is people that are looking for a couple of um, incentives. You know, uh, Texas has really good um, tax rules for small businesses. It's got really good integration of small businesses. And so when people come down here, they, they get quite the opportunity to not only have kind of the home that they want, but the environment that they want to run the businesses that they want. And, and so I really like that. And um, it's, a, it's also a, a huge military base. San Antonio houses five military um, bases that are here. And so you, we're constantly having the influx of people in and out of the Air Force, in and out of the military. And the wonderful thing about it is, is that Every Air Force person comes through Lackland. They they all do their training at Lackland and they fall in love with it at the very beginning. And then of course they're six weeks, eight weeks of training, they're done, they're off, they're they're sent wherever they are. And, and 20 years later, that is the place for their heart. And they're like, we want to come back to San Antonio. We want to go to the Hill Country. What can you do for us? So we love welcoming our, our, our military personnel as well, just to bring them into this back into the place that I think sits with them so well. Well, you're you're looking at one of them right here, and uh, it was a long <laughs> time ago, though I got to be honest. And uh, yeah, it's a be beautiful country. And and if we could back up just for a second, you said you just got back from California. What part? And did you have any reservations about leaving, or you think you made the right decision? Oh, we visited um, 
the uh, the Redwoods. So ah. we, we flew into San Francisco, um, took an absolutely spectacular drive up to the Redwoods. And I mean, holy moly, those trees, guys, like just the vastness of it was incredible. And I, I loved it. I The little towns up there, I think we stayed in Eureka. I mean, the towns were so pretty. The little houses were so cute. You know, it had this great environment to it, but I'm not too keen on the um, cool. So yeah. I I enjoy Texas for its warmth, for its heat. Um, yeah. Today, on the other hand, it is rainy and cold and 41 degrees. So it's a little <laughs> bit, I already have a fire going. So life yeah. is good. <laughs> well, you know what? I it It's so clear to me. I can see the passion. This is the first time that we've met and uh, for those of you that are listening in on our channel, we have over 340 realtors. Now, Terry has met and uh, talked to every one of our realtors in the group, which has been quite a task. He's done that over the last five years. But Jessica, the passion and the uh, I can just feel the warmth and it's just so special. And it's so important when you're choosing your realtor and you're trying to figure out whether you're selling and moving across the city, I mean, when we're talking about moving halfway across the country, that's another thing. Terry, what are your thoughts about uh, about Texas and so far in this podcast? A lot of things we hear about, uh, of course, there's no state income tax. But Jessica, can you address the property taxes? Because I know property taxes are a little different there. They tend to be a little higher there. But can you address that and tell us, are there some areas where it's better than others to plant if you're looking to save money on property taxes? Yes, absolutely. So, you know, where we are in Bernie, I think the tax rate, Callie's going to know more about this, but the tax rate's a little over 2% on your homes, where if you kind of go to some smaller, more rural areas, that tax rate is going to drop, or the county itself is going to have a uh, larger amount that you can credit towards your homestead. So your taxes get lowered. And so, you know, each of the counties are very specific on what it is that they they are willing to do and not willing to do. And I think sometimes it comes down to how many schools do you have in the area? What are you actually looking to draw? Do Does, does this county need better roads? Does it need m more uh, technology to come into it? And so when they kind of take those into, into play, th those taxes really rely on what is that infrastructure that we're bringing in? And I know that we have other bonds and, you know, Bernie, uh, Texas, which is in Kendall County, you know, they just passed a huge bond ordinance, which was, I think, $14 million. And so that money went to not only fill the voids that we needed for, for something to make the roads better, to make all of that stuff, but it also upgraded the technology that new people needed to, to move in, right? I mean, one of the hardest things that people have had is the inability to have Wi-Fi. And, and once we kind of made that fixture and people could go anywhere and they could get Wi-Fi anywhere, it, it changed the momentum of people's movement. And so you know, I think you know what? Um, we were talking to somebody, I believe it was Joshua Long in Dallas, and they said that the legislature was talking about lowering your tax brackets. Is that something that's happening in your areas that you guys have seen? Callie, do you know that? They, uh, well, he may have been referring to the homestead tax exemption where it used to be, well, two years ago, we had a $25,000 exemption, which they raised to 40. And this year it's on the ballot um, coming up. Well, it's on the ballot now because it's uh, early, early voting for the elections okay. to decrease the homestead or increase the homestead exemption to $100,000 off the value. So mm -hmm. he, he might have been referring to that. Proposition. And Callie, it looks like you are having some technical difficulties. I was. I'm so sorry. My, my it's okay. We got gotcha. you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're happy to have you back. And, Thank you. Thank um, you. I understand you guys are both partners. So you both, you get uh, a two for one here, it looks yeah. like. And by That's having two, two people, it's so much better. And you guys are going to have your expertise in different areas. So mm -hmm. um, next thing I want to talk about is your your specific area and why are so many Californians coming to Texas and specifically your area? And maybe you guys could share some reasons why people are migrating to that area. Well, I, I think people like the Hill Country area because we have a little bit of everything, which which y'all do too there in California, right? You've got You've got your beaches and you've got your mountains not too far away. Right. Well, in the in the hill country, we're we're not mountains, but we got some pretty big hills and it's nice. And we have some nice clear water and the streams and the rivers. 
So you got a lot of outdoor activities, which I think a lot of appeals to California people. And then your beach is really not that far away, or at least your coastline is only a couple of hours um, away from here. Uh, San, San Antonio is one of the larger cities in the country. But when you go out, just branch out maybe 20 minutes from there, then you've just got a much more laid back, peaceful way of life with all of the amenities of the city really close by. You know, everybody knows San Antonio. And I got to be honest, when I lived in Houston for several years in the past, I didn't think that uh, Texas had m many hills. And being from Vegas, we have all these mountains and stuff. And I was really pleasantly surprised at how beautiful it was there in the Texas Hill Country. Uh, and, and I know that geographically, people understand San Antonio probably more than anything. How far away are you guys from San Antonio? 15 minutes. Oh. Yeah, 15, 20 minutes. It's a Perfect. straight shot up I-10. It it really is um, not far at all. And a lot of people love the um, wine country that's up in the Texas Hill Country as well. So, you know, it's maybe 20 minutes from San Antonio to Bernie. And then if you add maybe another 20 30 minutes, you can get all the way up to like Fredericksburg and Fredericksburg and that area um, has tons of wineries. It's got like a wine row. You can just go down and check out You just one street. You just drive 20 miles and you can have every winery you can possibly imagine. And so, you know, I think that that's, that's really fun and they've, they've kept the ambiance. And like I said, if, if you drive out, you really kind of see just, I think kind of a smaller hilly version of California. Mm. <laughs> Interesting. Now, you guys, uh, I believe both of you guys had shared with me that you actually have a radio show and we don't get to talk about radio much when we're doing live podcasts. But tell me a little bit about your show and what do you guys do all the time, uh, every week? Uh, what, yes, we have a radio show that airs on our local Bernie radio station on Saturday mornings. And we we talk to local businesses a lot. A, a portion of our segment just hi highlights different local businesses and then we just we talk to other experts that have to do with real estate, right? Sometimes we talk to appraisers, sometimes we talk to roofers, sometimes we talk to title companies, we talk to loan officers, just any any kind of component that that would have to do with owning a house, buying a house, selling a house. That's that's what we discuss. That's and awesome. We started it because we really felt that there was a lot of things out there that people didn't know. And so, you know, real estate when you, when you get into it, I think a lot of times it's, I've got to move or I've got to have a house. And, and so that's just the construct that you're in, but not asking those questions or not understanding what you're supposed to know can really do some serious damage. I mean, you know, you have a military personnel that comes in and they're, they're PCSing in 18 months. Well, Kelly and I are going to have a much different conversation with them about what they're going to put down on their house, what their expectation of a return is, what, what, what they're act, if they're going to get any money out of the sale of it in 18 months versus saying, oh, sure, we'll just get as much closing costs as you can. We'll tie in your VA benefits. We'll do all of that. And the problem is if they get to the end of it, then they're in a position that they can't get out. And so I think that informing people ahead of time exactly what it is, not only the incoming costs, but the outgoing costs benefits somebody so much more. And especially having people that are coming from a completely different state, they, there's a lot of things that they don't know, right? What are, what are their inspection fees? What are their, their registration fees? What are their taxes for that matter? What do they need to do that Texas requires that California wouldn't necessarily? And, you know, what are your, you may lose a little bit of money here, but you're also gaining it over here. And so to be able to balance that out for people that are coming that understand what it is, it makes it so much better. And, and by having experts to talk about the things we're not experts in, I think that cohesiveness is really important for people. Go go ahead, Terry. Looks like you have a thought. I was going to say, <laughs> uh, uh, first of all, uh, Bernie, if I recall, is spelled B-O-E-R-N-E. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. So for yeah. people in California who are typing B-U-R-N-Y uh, Texas, they're not going to get Bernie. Yes. And that's the one thing I remember about Texas they don't pronounce it the way you would think, <laughs> so, <laughs> but you don't want to call it Borny either. So I understand you'll get that quickly. Thing. You'll get quickly corrected. I'm sure. Of that. <laughs> well, if you say born, then we're going to know you're not from here. That's right. Yeah. It's just like people who go to Boise, Idaho and say Boise. Yeah. They know they're a foreigner. It's not Boise. It's Boise. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They'll correct you. 
But can you just talk about the the, the Bernie area, how big it is, how, what the population is? And I think you said you're 20 minutes from San Antonio. Does that include 20 minutes from the airport when you're when you're looking to to, to the uh, hill country? Yeah, so uh, the city of Bernie, uh, the, I think on the last census, we had about 20,000 people. Um, it's probably a little bit bigger bigger than that at this point because we've been growing quite quite rapidly. The, the county has probably about twice that much in it. Um, we have a, a just a really a really nice little downtown, historic downtown area, which is sort of the hot spot of the whole city. You know, there's a lot of um, breweries and restaurants and a, a trail with a creek to just, you know, walk around on. It's a great place to spend the weekend. That that area of town is just packed every single weekend with events and whatnot. Um, but the traffic here is really not, you know, not bad. You can get from one side of town to the other in 10 minutes, you know, at pretty much any time of day, except for maybe when school lets out. Um, to get to the outskirts of San Antonio, it's probably 15 minutes. To get all the way down to the airport from downtown Bernie, it's probably 25. Wouldn't you say, Jess, 25? Yeah, 25, maybe 30. Yeah. If you get to stuck in San Antonio airport. Though. Yeah, but yeah, it's just it's all very very close. And now the weather gonna... is different than there. You know, it is going to be a hundred degrees so mm. for a month, maybe two months in the summertime. But you know, you work in well, unless you work outside, it's just really not that big of a deal because the cost of energy is not anywhere near like it is in California. That's so right. you just sort of hop from one air conditioned place to the next, you know, and that's your day. You know, like for for instance, my my electric bill in August where every single day was over a hundred and I keep my house, you know, at 68 to 70. Uh -oh. And wow. my bill was outrageous at $200, you know, wow. not happy with that because usually it's more like 75. So, you know, when mm. people are afraid of the, of the weather, sometimes maybe they're just afraid of, of what they perceive it's going to be like, but I don't really think anything about that much. And and what kind of house can you get for five hundred thousand dollars? Is that does that get you a nice house? New do you have new construction in the area? Things like that. We have a lot of new construction in the area. Yes, yeah. so you could get it. You could get a new house for five hundred thousand dollars, probably around I don't know twenty two two thousand to twenty three hundred square feet or so, probably in that five hundred thousand dollar range. New okay. construction. You said just. Oh yeah. I mean, I think that if, if you look in comparison to what sells in California versus what sells in Texas for that price, you're going to find a pretty nice piece of property. I mean, there's, there's properties that are $500,000 that sit on a little bit of, of land, right? There's, there's gated houses that sit on a little bit of property for that. So it just kind of depends on, on what you want. I, I don't remember the last average sales price. Um, we talked about it on our show, but what was it, Kelly? Like six? Four? Uh, I I don't have the numbers in front of me right now, but I would say the average sales price is probably in the six fifty range in Bernie in the in Bernie in the proper. Mm -hmm. And then and then San Antonio, it it just creeped over the three hundred thousand mark for average. Um, mm -hmm. That that uh, uh, Bear County uh, sent out their numbers and they and they said that they had crossed over the three hundred thousand dollars. So there's a vast range of prices for beautiful homes. I mean, you can get some great homes, like I, like I was saying earlier, in smaller areas that are not as expensive, but they still don't, they don't provide the big things that you're looking for, right? So Bernie has accolades for their schools, both, both of their high schools um, for the last 10 years, every year have been top 500 high schools in the United States. So a lot of people come for the education. A lot of people come to have their kids attend those schools, you know, get great scholarships and, and go off to college. So you do have that draw as well. And I think the pass rate for the kids are, is a lot higher and the integration for the kids is a lot better. I don't have kids myself. I know Callie, Callie has some kids, um, but she might have a different view on the school. The, uh, there, there's also multiple private school opportunities in Bernie as well, I mean, as well as San Antonio, but specifically in Bernie, I think we probably have five or six that I can think of off the top of my head, just private schools. So the, the, and, and there's also a big homeschool population in the area, you know, yeah. that's your thing. there's lots of co-ops for that. So really, uh, education for your child, you just have a variety of choices in this area. So we we had a first uh, today, Terry. I I didn't miss, I should have started off with this. It was amazing. I I always post on you know that we're going to be in Texas, 
And this was the first time, Terry, that not one person had a negative comment. I was reading through the comments and everybody was like, oh my gosh, I love Texas. I love Texas. There was no negative comments. And I had about 25 comments on both of the pages. So uh, Texas is, it, it, like I said, I've been there. It's a great state. It's really a beautiful area we're talking about. Do you, I, I want to go a little bit more, dive a little deeper into real estate. We'll talk about inventory in your market. I also want to talk about, you guys talked about San Antonio. Will you guys actually take clients into San Antonio and work with them? And uh, talk a little bit about days on market, price reductions, and anything else that people are considering your area in the real estate market, please. So will we take people into San Antonio? Yes, absolutely. Seven days a week. Just let us know. Because <laughs> like, like I said, it's just right there. I mean, it'd probably be going anyways. So that that's not a big deal at all. And in and, and any any of the smaller areas sort of around San Antonio. I mean, a, a, San Antonio is sort of a circular city. It's made up of loops. And, and so you sort of have a perimeter around the, the entire city that... Mm -hmm that is, is great. You know, it just kind of depends on what you want. Do you, do you want more hilly? Do you want more remote? Do you want to be close to a military base? Do you sort of like a little flatter with a little greener grass? Cause they get a little more rain over on the, you know, the other side of town. <laughs> I mean, it just depends on what you're looking for. So, right, right. but we know about all that and we can find it for you. And, and how's the, in, how's the inventory and days on market price reductions and things like that going? Mm -hmm. So so with pre-owned homes only, I I don't have the stats in front of me, so I'm going off my memory. But last time I checked, I want to say it was about 4.8 .8 months of inventory for pre-owned. And then I, we got up to just under six months if you calculated in the uh, new construction. New construction homes at this time are lowering their prices a bit more aggressively than the pre-owned homes are um, for the same range of price. But there's there's plenty of inventory, plenty of opportunities. It's it's interesting um, about the the new builds though because they they were actually pretty smart and they went out and got um, some really good borrowing power to have internal lenders within their pre builds and so I mean what Kelly maybe the last six months or so they have just been pushing much better interest rates for people to purchase new homes than kind of what you can get outstanding in the market for, you know for a lender a mortgage broker so I I think that it's kind of an interesting power dynamic of, of are people going because the price is less because of the interest rate or are people going that way because they actually want a more, a brand new home with more upgrades. And so it's, it's kind of figuring that out because it really is, you know, again, back what we were saying earlier, like, you know, people having Wi-Fi that changes their ability to work from home and what can they do for those processes? So I think that the new builds out here made a smart move on doing that because they offer a better rate for people now. Yeah. A lot of the bigger box builders did do that sort of bought package package rates, I guess, so to speak for lack of a better term, but we are seeing quite a bit of sellers of um, pre-owned homes offering buy down rates, mm -hmm. you know, rather than, rather than necessarily making a price change, a lot of them are offering to throw in on the buy down rate to, you know, to try to make the monthly payment more in line with what people are wanting to spend. So you're just seeing a lot of creativity to overcome the hurdle of the of the interest rates right now in the market. Now, Callie, a lot of people have never heard of buy down because interest rates have been close to zero for the last many years. Can you just kind of describe what, what buy down rates are? Yes, of course. Well, I'm not a lender. I, you know, I'm a realtor, but um, you can you can do that a variety of different ways. One that's popular is a two one buy down, where your first year you would have a rate that was maybe a whole a, a whole percentage point lower, maybe even two percentage points lower, and then the second year your rate would go up a little bit, and then the third year it would adjust to the normal rate. But during that time, you could um, refinance if the rates came down. But it's not a true adjustable rate mortgage because after that third year or the second year, whichever one you go with, it doesn't ad continue to adjust. Whereas an arm would adjust, you know, at any time during the entire course of the loan. But you can just permanently buy down the rate too. You know, it's referred to as buying points from the from the lender, and the seller could contribute to your buying down of your points so that you just have your lower rate throughout the course of your loan. In the last several uh, meetings that we've had, we've talked about the flip in the market. And um, I'm just wanted to confirm that maybe you are seeing that more often. We used to explain it that 15 to 20,000 over was the norm if you wanted to buy a house in, in most markets. 
Now we're finding that sellers are giving seller incentives for two to one buy downs that are offering 15 to 20,000 for the buyers because there's not very many of them. Is that some of the things that you guys are seeing in your market? It is, it is. And I mean, I think people are, are stuck in a position where they they have to debate. Do I stick with the rate that I have and enjoy the house that I have, or do I put on the market and maybe take a, a, a loss on it? And so I think a lot of people are, are sitting on their homes, you know, deciding I'm going to see if the market comes back down. I'm going to wait because when that really comes down to crunching the numbers, unfortunately, there's a lot of people that don't have that cash to close and they're kind of stuck in a position of keeping their house. And so I, I think as we go through, you know, the lenders and everybody being on the same page, you got to be able to get that to close at the end because people having an expectation that they can throw their house in the market and get an extra thirty, forty thousand dollars on it is is not here anymore. And so I think it's also very um, important to educate them that as things shift, this is why, this is where this is coming in. And you know, I think unfortunately, some people that bought twenty, thirty thousand dollars extra during COVID, they can't get out of it without a loss. And so I think that that's it's a difficult scenario. And you got to be really careful with people about that. You know, those are those are things that are scary for them. And you know, everyone's told that when you buy a house, it's an investment. You make money off of it. So how do you end up walking those clients out of that if they have to get out of it and they're kind of at a at a set price point? So uh, let's switch gears a little. That's a lot. That's a lot of great information about real estate. And I appreciate you guys sharing. And by the way, for people that are sitting and watching and listening to our podcast, this is not just about people moving to Texas. This is about people leaving California, escaping the Golden State. And we just like to give information kind of like the same thing that you guys do on your radio show. So we just want to be a resource for people to be able to have uh, answers to their questions. But let's talk about weather. Every uh, segment, every time we go somewhere different in the country, we're always talking about weather. And I lived in Houston, so I went through uh, Hur Hurricane Harvey. That was crazy. And uh, I've seen some tornadoes. Uh, people, when they're considering a, a new place to live, they really want to know about the weather. So can you guys share some weather information for us? This is not Houston. So we don't, <laughs> we don't have mosquitoes the size of birds here. And we do not have the humidity level that you have in Houston. It's a completely different climate. Yes. It <laughs> still does a number to my hair, though. So <laughs> I will well, tell it you. Is, it's pretty, it's, well, it's raining today. We've been in a, in a drought for a little bit um, here in our area. So rain will take it any day of the week because we, we need it. But uh, I mean, and it is hot here, but we, we don't have the humidity level like Houston. Um, the winter times are pretty mild. I mean, you, you might get to freezing once or twice. Yeah, it almost never snows, you know, maybe maybe once every five years or so. We had the snow apocalypse a couple of years ago, which I, yeah, I think- We're still talking about it because- You're still talking about it, but we hadn't had a snowstorm since like 1988 before. Right. So, right. so it was the really, it was really kind of a long- <laughs> Literally. Yeah, snap. it was a lockdown. It was amazing. <laughs> I mean, people, the roads just shut down. People did not know how to drive and- but it was so it was so beautiful though because you just had a blanket of snow that we don't get and you'd open your front door and it was just it was a whole Iceland winter so I, I you know it was great but well, I, people I laugh think, that we shut down the world but yes we also don't have the ice the the de icing equipment we we just don't you know it doesn't snow here it doesn't get icy mm -hmm. like that so we just don't have a lot of the equipment to keep everything up and running because our weather isn't typically that that dramatic but we we don't really have tornadoes in this area much either because it's not flat. You know, we have the hills and it breaks that energy up. Um, a hur if a hurricane comes in, we're lucky if we get some rain off of it. We, mm -hmm. You know, we're, we don't want to wish a hurricane on anybody, but it is kind of nice when we get some rain. <laughs> well, that's a great, great explanation <laughs> of the weather. Let, let's go ahead and you talk about the fun stuff. And it okay. sounds like you guys are, you guys both enjoy life. You're both passionate. Uh, let's talk about all of the fun stuff and maybe sports teams, entertainment, uh, hiking, trails, lakes, what you name it. What What's the allure uh, for fun stuff? Oh, well, I mean, San Antonio Spurs are right up the, the road. They have a new player that's all in the hype, in case you guys don't know him. You know, Mr. Wembley, they got him. They got him on. Uh, that's a lot of fun. We have a local baseball team, the San Antonio Missions. 
So you can go go see that. We've got a rodeo that kicks off every year in February. It's got a bunch of great bands that come in and the kids get to do the, um, what is it when they, they do the little sheep? What, the mutton busting? Yeah, the mutton busting. <laughs> so, you know, to see the little kids in their boots and their hats and they get all, it's just, it's, it's absolutely precious. And, you know, San Antonio and the, the surrounding areas have just great community relations. I mean, Bernie, there's a, a there's events for everybody, right? So there's car shows for people that have cars. There's um, diva night for girls that want to go out and go shopping. There's all sorts of fun kids events. Um, every year, Bernie hosts the Dickens on Main. They shut down the streets. Everybody can only drive in so far. And then the rest of the town's just walking and, you know, just the beauty of that. And, and because I think Texas, especially in our area, has relatively good weather, even though it gets hot, Every outdoor spot is great. I mean, most places have outdoor seating and then they add the like either fans or misters or something to keep people cool while you're outside if it does get too hot. Um, but I mean, any hop, skip or jump, you can find something that's beautiful. I mean, you can go to the San Antonio River Walk. You can go to the Bernie Lake. You can go to Fredericksburg for wine. I mean, Bernie has what? Three three hiking trails that you can get off to plus the one that's the the Bernie mile. If you want to just stay local and just walk through the Bernie town, it's really fun. And then we also that, have state parks nearby, such as the Guadalupe state park. It's just a, what about eight miles outside of Bernie, the city of Bernie. Mm -hmm. They have trails there. They have river access there, camping, hiking, all sorts of things. And that's just one. There's probably five other ones than a you know day's drive of here. And I, I don't know if you guys do it, but I know, I know I love it. I'm pretty sure Kelly does too, but there's tubing that's available. So like up in New Braunfels, which is kind of the opposite way of Bernie from San Antonio. Down um, the Guadalupe. Down the Guadalupe. Yep. Oh, it's the Canal actually. The in, Canal, uh, yes. Yeah. In New Braunfels, it's the, it's the Canal River, which is the shortest river in Texas actually, but the most popular for tubing. But I personally like to yeah. the Guadalupe, yes. It was super fun. Yeah, I did it with my daughter. Really, really fun. And that's a town called Green, but you're not supposed to pronounce it the way it's spelled, right? Oh, it's yeah. not Green. Green. Yeah, Green. Green. well, I mean, I, I guess the old Germans would say Grün, yes, but I think colloquially now it's Green. Well, this is so much great information. Terry, what else do you got for these guys on Texas? Well, I want I want to second the Riverwalk. I've been on the Riverwalk in San Antonio many times. I got to say, if you can... If the weather allows you, go to Boudreaux's right there on the river, Louisiana cooking. They'll even make uh, guacamole table side for you, which is just spectacular. I also, isn't the Salt Lick barbecue, isn't that based in Bernie or in that area? Or you have some there? You guys familiar with Salt Lake barbecue? Oh, oh we've got great barbecue. barbecue. Yeah, okay. I don't the doubt river it. Walk is also just right there next to, well, the river walk goes a long ways, but the primary area that most people go to is right next to the Alamo. So that's right. Texas, that's right. Got to go visit the Alamo. Been to the Alamo many times. And you can ride on the river. Uh, you can ride a boat on the river walk. that will take you yeah. through the town. Also, if you want to take an extra day, I recommend you stay on the river walk. There's all kinds of hotels on the river walk. Stay on the river walk and make it a, a, a nice outing there and then go visit Bernie and New Braunfels. And I'd never heard of green before, but I'll, I'll take yeah. your word for it. <laughs> yeah. oh, it's, all, well, it's all fabulous. Yes. It is. And they actually uh, do in Fiesta, they do a, a night river parade. They do river parades in general on the river walk. But during Fiesta, they also do one at night where all the, the little river boats are lit up and it's just a huge party. Every everyone's mm -hmm. down sitting on all of the patios for all of the restaurants, watching the festivities, and and people throw uh, tortillas. It's really fun. <laughs> so, um, you know, we're we're getting up closer to the, our our time, but it, again, it's always so much fun to be sharing. And and I feel like I'm traveling, uh, but I would love to come back and see it again. I haven't been there in quite some time. Um, for all the people that are listening on our Leaving California channels, um, if you know, a lot of times we know that it's a big decision and, you know, this is, they don't take this lightly. Uh, one of the things that our theme has been in the last few weeks, we talk about realtors and we talk about realtors that are just trying to sell a house. And that's the last thing that we want as people, as part of our network. So, you know, we encourage people to come out and to meet a realtor like, like you guys, and to be able to go around and, and really tour the city. So two, this is kind of a double question. 
One is I want to know if you have any favorite stories of families that you've helped relocate from hopefully California or from anywhere where it's just a story where they relocated to your area and you can share. And then if you had any advice for somebody that was kind of on the fence and they weren't sure if they should really take that big leap of faith and get out of California, what would you tell them? Oh, I'd say jump. I'd say come to Texas. We're happy to have you. Um, but I do, I agree with you. It's a very, very, very big life decision. So, I mean, first off, just call and talk to us, give us your concerns, you know, say, Hey, I've heard this about Texas. What's the case? Or, Hey, I'm really concerned that, you know, the income tax income, there's no income state taxes, but how much are my real estate taxes? And, you know, kind of understanding all of that. And I think once you have that in the back of your head, closed off and you've had those answers, it makes it a lot easier to make that move because then it's more of a emotional, I really like this spot or mm -mm, it's not for me, but you already have the factual information that's that's in there, which gives you a great starting point. Yeah, do you, I would say- do you, Go ahead, call and come go ahead. Visit. We'll show you around. I said, I would say, just give us a call and come for a visit. You know, we'll show you around. Maybe yeah. it's your place, maybe it's not, but you won't know until you look and see. Yeah. Great advice. Do you guys have a favorite story of somebody that relocated to your area? Oh, I have a, I mean, I have a great story. We had a, a military family that um, retired. They came to San Antonio and uh, they were going to get a house. And then they thought about it and they ended up getting a rental. And then we helped them move. They moved to Mississippi and then we helped them move to Alabama. And then we helped move to Florida. And then they were like, well, let's come back to Texas. And so they came back to Texas and they were like, everywhere we went, you helped us get a place. Then you helped us sell the place. But we realized the only place we wanted to be was in Texas. And so now they're here. They're right up the road. It's great. Every once in a while, they give us a call and they're like, hey, let's, how's the world going? Or we need a new CMA because our taxes are coming up. But it's just so much fun because they really did go out and explore and nothing worked for them. And then they had a safe and fun place to come back when they were ready. Yeah. I just love seeing people who move to the area from another area. And then I actually see them, you know, yes. at a restaurant or somewhere. I mean, I just saw one last weekend. We had a, no, two weekends ago, we had a big event down on main street because we had an eclipse here and, uh, and a client that I had sold a home to probably three or four months ago just came over started talking took me a second I was like oh and then he was like he just thought it was the best thing ever they had friends in town for the event you know that had come in and they were selling them on Bernie and he was like sure enough it's exactly everything that you said it was going to be yeah yeah it's perfect so ter Terry I think we hit most everything uh about this area in Texas but did, did I miss anything today Terry I don't think so I think people will be pleasantly surprised if they go to the San Antonio Hill Country area most people don't know that San Antonio is literally one of the largest metropolitan areas in the country. It's got millions and millions of people. But when you're there, it doesn't really feel like it. The highways are nice and big. It's got a rush hour that I, last time I was there, it had a rush hour. It doesn't have a rush day like California has, where it's from 6 a.m. till 9 p.m. You've got rush hour. Great quality of life. Great people in the area, too. I would definitely recommend you connect with Jessica and Callie if you're considering that area of Texas, or if even considering just Texas, great place to relocate your business. You got a thriving airport. In fact, uh, this morning I was out walking my dogs. I looked on my app and I saw the plane here from Orlando was flying nonstop to San Antonio. And I said, well, I'll be visiting San Antonio later today. So there we go. Good. Glad you landed safe. <laughs> well, um, ladies, when we wrap up, if you have any parting words or any other thoughts that you want to share, please do so. And please make sure that you give your full uh, name and your email and your contact information. So when people are considering your area, they they should definitely call you guys. I can definitely vouch for you. I can see the passion that you have. And it just, it just exudes even through this video and through the internet. Um, they, you guys should definitely give these, these ladies a call. They know what they're doing. They can definitely help you out. So go ahead and give your contact information, please. So my name is Jessica Johnson. I'm one of the owners here, 210-827-3733. And they can check us out on The Real Estate of Texas, which is all of our podcasts, if they want to get some more information, or they can go to solidrealtygroup.com. And my name is Callie Red, and I'm the broker and co-owner. 
And my phone number is 210-478-7265. Or you can reach me at Callie, spelled Callie, C-A-L-I, like California, Callie at solidrealtygroup.com. All right. Well, everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate you guys listening and learning about Texas. Go ahead, Terry. Oh, no, I, I absolutely. I think you guys should, uh, if if Texas is even in the back of your mind, go visit and you'll be pleasantly surprised if you've never been there. It's a great place to go visit and also to move to. Absolutely. All right. We'll, we'll talk to you soon. Take care. Thank you. Thanks, y'all. Have a wonderful yeah. day.